Hello everyone, hi my name is Toria and today my Torio is going to be on ruchi, which is another term for gathering or putting little pleats in your fabric. There are many many different ways or techniques to do this. I'm just going to show you one. It's the way that I uh, usually do it and it's the easiest way I find to do it. Some things that you're going to need is um, either a sewing machine or needle and thread because you can do ruching by hand. You also want to get, um, here's an example of the ruching and the fabric that I'm using. It's, as you can see, it's a silver metallic um, fabric. You want to get thread that matches your fabric as much as possible. Um, for example, I have here some silver thread. Uh, it's not an exact match to my fabric, but it matches it pretty well. I'm just going to explain to you how I do it, and then I'm going to show you what you need to do. Okay, let me change the camera position. Okay, I just want to um, talk through what I'm going to do before I actually show you. All you do is, according to your design, you cut out your fabric and you're just going to run straight stitches or basting stitches in um, equal increments on your fabric. A basting stitch is just a, a long straight stitch that's not locked at either end and that's easy to take out. You can of course do this by hand um, or machine. Some machines have uh, automatic property to it that locks the stitches in. It'll back stitch automatically. Um, you want to turn that off because you want to be able to pull these stitches out and you want to set your machine to the longest straight stitch that they can do because that's the easiest to remove. I just want to show you though the difference between having these ruffles or uh, not ruffles, um, gathers being horizontal or vertical. So let's say these are the same pieces of fabric. This is my top and this is my bottom. If I want my uh, ruching to be laying horizontally, I'm going to run the stitches in the opposite direction of the top. So I'm going to run vertical stitches to produce horizontal side to side ruching. If I want vertical stitching, I'm going to run the stitching horizontally to the top and bottom. So this is going to be the same parallel to the top and bottom, but this is going to be perpendicular to the top and bottom. Let me show you that close up. So let's say this is a top, let's just say this is a skirt. And this is the top of my skirt and this is the bottom of my skirt. I'm going to run stitches um, horizontally or uh, vertically if I want horizontal little ruffles. And say this is my skirt and this is the top and this is the bottom. I'm going to run the stitches the exact same way as the top um, and bottom parallel if I want my ruching to be vertical. Okay, I hope I, under I explained that well. Okay, so let's just get started. All I'm going to do is thread in my machine with my um, thread that's a close match. You're going to thread the top and the bottom. You can also, of course, do this by hand. Oh, and one more thing that I want to mention. In the video, um, I actually did the basting stitches before I finished the edge. But then when I went to make this um, little sample piece to show you, I finished the edges first. And I don't know if you can see that very well. I just finished the edges with my serger. Or you can do a fold over edge. I actually found, making this example, that it's much easier to... Um, finish the edges first before you start to do your um your basting stitches so i guess from now on i'm going to actually do this in the video i finished the um, edges last but go ahead and finish the edges first it's uh, much easier to work with before we get started another thing i also want to mention is design and the amount of fabric you're going to need this is really trial and error but what you can do is before you cut your fabric actually just lay your fabric out and just 
manually scrunch it up to uh, look like how you want the um, ruching to be so you can see how much it shrinks because you're actually going to want to add extra fabric to your um, your pattern because it shrinks up. I usually add about an extra 5 to 10 inches depending on how tight I want these ruches to be. So just play around with it and it's really trial and error but I just gather it up like that and say I want a uh, a skirt length that's 22 inches so I'll have my tape measure out 22 inches and I'll line up the fabric and I'll just gather it up like this in my hand until it gets to 21 inches or 22 inches and then I'll see that's how much extra fabric I'm going to need so let's get started mark out where you want to place your stitches I did mine every two inches this way your stitches are even and consistent. I did that all the way down the fabric. And I used a invisible ink pen so this will come off. And I just did little dashes. This is just a guideline that I'll follow when I'm doing my stitches. I really want this to be consistent and even so I did it every two inches. And I just used a little ruler to mark out every two inches. Okay, and next all you need to do is sew those stitches in. Okay, now we're going to put our stitches in. And I'm just going to use the guidelines that I've drawn on here. I've also set my machine to the longest straight stitch that it will do. Also, if your machine has a locking mechanism on it that automatically locks or back stitches, you need to turn that off because you don't want these stitches to be locked in. So with my machine, it automatically locks it. So in order to turn that off, I need to um, lower the needle into the fabric to start it so that it won't lock. And also, some people loosen the tension on their machine. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If you find that loosen the tension helps you pull the strings, then go ahead and loosen the tension on your uh, machine also. It's also important after you finish sewing to make sure you leave a long tail on that thread um, so that you have some thread to work with pulling it. And as you can see, it's already starting to bunch up because I'm not using a walking foot and this fabric is very stretchy. So it's going to already start to ruche on its own. Make sure I'm pulling out some thread here so I can have some tail on both ends of the fabric. I want a long tail to work with, with pulling. And again with my machine, I don't want this to lock in. I don't want to back stitch. So I'm dropping the needle into my uh, fabric so that it doesn't lock the thread into the fabric. I've already just done two and you can see a little bit of ruching is happening on its own that will happen if your fabric is stretchy and lightweight like this is
Okay, so, so far I have three done. I'm going to continue all the way down my fabric, just following these guidelines, and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've completed putting my long stitches in all throughout the piece. And I don't know if you can see this very well because my table is white, but each one has these long tails hanging off the end of thread on each, either side, the top and the bottom. And this is what it looks like right after I've finished sewing it. So I haven't pulled any strings. It's already ruched a bit. If you liked it like this, you could uh, you can leave it like this and sew this right onto your costume. However, I'm going to pull the strings and make it ruch up a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm going to try to show you how you, sh you ruch the fabric a little bit more if you want it to be tighter than this. A lot of people say, and I've said it too, to pull the thread. But um, for some reason, I always break the thread when trying to pull it. So a better term would be more like scrunch the fabric down onto the thread or push the fabric down onto the thread. So as you see, you have two tail threads here, a top and a bottom. I'm going to hold on to the top and then I'm going to just take this fabric and push it down onto the thread, scrunch it down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, other end holding the top thread, which is the one that came from the top of your machine. And I'm going to push this fabric down onto that. And now it's tightly ruched. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way down, holding on to the top thread and just pushing down. And I push kind of halfway down and then switch to the other end and kind of push it halfway down. And you can start from the middle pushing down and then work your way up to the end. And you see it's getting a little bit tighter and tighter as I go. Okay, let me also show you the traditional way of doing it. This way I don't usually do it because I always break a thread. But traditionally, let me pull out some, you're supposed to just pull the top thread. So instead of scrunching the fabric down onto that thread, you just hold it and pull it. And you can see it's scrunching up there. And you can go to the bottom and do the same thing and pull it. And it's working now, but usually I always break a thread. Take it, top thread, and just pull it. And when I break a thread, I have to pull all the thread out and redo it. So take the top thread and just pull it. You see, I feel, I feel like it's about to break. I'm going to do one more. Just hold on to the top thread and just pull it. That one worked well. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. I'm just going to pull it. And it scrunches up that uh, fabric onto that thread very nicely. So you can do it either way, scrunch it down or pull it. If you're like me and you feel like you're going to break it, then just scrunch it down. Okay, as you can see, I've finished um, pulling the threads or scrunching the fabric down onto the thread. And as you can see, it's much, much smaller looking than what it was before once I've scrunched down all that fabric. That's why um, measuring how much fabric you need can be really tricky. It just all depends on how ruched you want it to look. Okay, so this is how I finish the ruching. I know some people do it differently, but this is just the way I do. I go down every single stitch and I just knot these two end tails. I just tie it in a square knot a couple times. I'm just knotting that. And now just knot on both sides. After I complete it knotting, I'm just going to fold this over like this and just sew a stitch down um, to make it seam and finish that edge. 
Okay, so I just wanted to show you to finish this edge. All I did was fold over the edge of the fabric and sew it down. Let me show you the back. It's just folded over. And these little tails, I don't cut until after I finish because it makes it easier to pull these out of the way while you're sewing if they're long. So keep them long and just fold over that fabric and sew it down. And once you're finished, then you can cut these, all these long tails off. Let me show you the front. And it's just finished its edge by folding it over and sewing it down. And then do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so I've finished the edges. My next step will be to cut off all these long tail strings that I have left. Remember to return your machine to its original settings if you had loosened the tension up or if you had took off your back stitch. And now I'm just going to cut all these extra long loose um, threads off. So I've completed both pieces. One is for the skirt and the other smaller piece is for the bra. My next step is just to sew this down onto the skirt that I've already made. And I'll sew the top piece down to the bra that I've already made and covered. If you have any questions or comments, please email me or write a, a comment in the box below. And thanks for watching.